Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching Nile Cruise on Nile TV International. And from a very special place here in Cairo, dear viewers, celebrating very special days, uh, celebrating the Merry Christmas and wishing you all a Happy New Year. We bring you from St. Mark Cathedral in Abbasaya, dear viewers, a very special episode. And dear viewers, the distinctive unity between the Egyptian uh, Muslims and Copts and the heritage behind it is worthy of study as a model to be emulated. The Copts of Egypt are as Egyptians as the pyramids and the Nile. The word Copt or gift is connected to the words, of course, Egyptus, meaning black soul, which was abbreviated in Latin to Egypt. There are very, uh, of course, dear viewers' names confirmed that the Copts belong to this part of the world. Christianity and Islam have coexisted in the same fa families for years through the coexistence both Copts and Muslims discovered that there are very extent, extensive uh, common ground between both their viewers. Muslims and Christians in Egypt have been able to create a unique state of coexistence in which they practice diversity in unity, although they are religiously different. They uh, never disagree on the love of the homeland and the concern for its unity and coexistence, rejecting anything that could disturb its coexistence or upset its harmony and its mood. And in this context, dear viewers, we have a very special guest. He is Father uh, Musa Abid, dear viewers, and we are honored to host our distinguished guest to tell us more about the special unity that we have been mentioning, dear viewers, in our introduction. A very good day, Father. And it's a pleasure always to have you with us on uh, very special days, uh, celebrating very special holidays. Okay, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sir, so, uh, coexistence is part of Egyptian life, and uh, Christmas uh, sees uh, the two religious uh, communities come together out of respect and compassion. Your motto, sir, on this. Okay. Of course, as, as you said, that love and respect is the, the pillars for the relationship between Christians and the Muslims. And this is deep embedded in the, in the human nature. Some thoughts sometimes disturb these this embedded thoughts, but again, the true re religion is the one that uh, makes this shine and uh, lighten. So again, this is very clear in the in special events. Even in the events of sorrow, we can see people gather together to, to support each other. And of course, in the events of festivals and happy events, we, we see this uh, true love and and respect among Muslims and Christians because it's it's a truly embedded inside their nature okay um sir president of Fatah is always keen uh, to attend the Christmas celebration every year how do you read and view this sir from your own perspective and from the perspective of every person that is attending um, of course this very special day which is the 6th of January of course, this is very important to us and to Egypt uh, as a whole because this respect and, and equality and citizenship among all citizens is, is the pillar of the um, civilized countries. So one again sees this, this as our, our country is, is developed more and more and, and adopt this, this ideas of citizenship and equality among all all citizens, especially that there is some ages and the previous ages before when Christians and of course somewhat Muslims have, have some persecution from, from some governors like at the period of Mamalik and at the period of Al Hakim Amrullah, this was very hard ages. But again, when as in a civilized country, see this equality and this citizenship rights for all people re regardless of, of their religion. This is uh, very important and um, very essential for the development of our country. 
Okay, perfect, sir. Um, uh, when we come to celebrate Christmas here in Egypt, um, uh, we celebrate a Christmas uh, very happily, very joyfully, and uh, we really feel that it's a festival that we all Egyptians, Muslims, and Christians are together celebrating. Uh, it's a holiday that we all want to go out and we all want to see the Christmas tree and we all want to join together and we all want to do the Santa, um, the Christmas Santa together. We all want to do it together, Muslims and Christians and uh, the importance, uh, um, Father, of this uh, and the origin of this very important day in, of course, our history and in our lives. Okay. Um the origin of Christmas, of course, is, is the birth of, of Jesus Christ more than 2,000 years ago because the word itself, Christmas, bears this meaning. It's, it consists of two, two parts, Christ, which means, of course, Christ, and Mass from um, different languages mean give birth to. So, so the, the word originally means the birth of Christ. But again, any feast, any feast, the deep in meaning or the deep meaning of the feast is the more important that give rise to other celebrations and other joy of the feast. So the deep meaning of, of Christmas is the, the birth of love, the birth of light, the birth of um, humanity, because at this point in the world history, the world is full of war and, uh, and the hatred and, uh, and injustice and, and darkness. So the, the hearts of people be, become very dark and they want something to give them light that shine inside them, that give them hope, that give them love, that everything can be good, but nothing can be good from outside circumstances. It should be inside out. It should be starting from inside of, of, of man or woman so that when his inside become enlightened, become really joyful, become really peaceful, then other expressions from outside of joy and peace can come. So we celebrate Christmas because this is the birth of love. Christ is love. He, he says that God is love and Christ is love. The birth of light, the birth of uh, uh, humility, because he, he was very humble and he was born in a, a very little manger in a very poor area, and he remains poor all of his life and uh, ask no, no authority or no money because he, he wanted to share with us our poverty so that he can make, make us rich. So this is the meaning of Christmas. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but how could he share your poverty to make you rich? Because he, he is initially the richest. Exactly. Uh, yes. In the richest through his uh, beliefs and through what he used to send. Um, the richest through what exactly? Um, as you know, uh, uh, in our Christian belief, Christ is, is, is God incarnate. So he already exists before his, his birth at earth. At earth, at his birth, he just took a body. He took a flesh. But he, by his, uh, by his divinity, he is, he is the richest. But again, he, he wants to share with us this, to give, as, as we said in one of the hymns of the, of the church, he give us what is his and he took what is ours. Mm -hmm. So he took our poverty to, to, to give us his richness. He took the, our, this uh, very poor life situation to give us love and respect and uh, and light and wisdom so so this is the true meaning of christmas that that give us our expressions of joy and even even our people in the church when they are uh, much uh, taken in uh, taken in various details like the clothes the food we, we, we need to remind them again and again that the true meaning is the heart, that it changes from darkness to light, from hatred to love, um, from desperate to hope. So this is the true meaning of Christmas that make us celebrate and express our joy with it. Perfect, sir. So this brings us to another um, 
a very controversial issue, of course, which is Santa Claus. And of course, Santa Claus uh, may be a Western belief, uh, but children all over the world know uh, the legend. Uh, why and when did people start believing in Santa Claus? And uh, tell us more about Santa Claus and how you, as a father, uh, when today we're celebrating, of course, a very special holiday, uh, you're with us, and how do you see Santa Claus? Okay. Of course, Santa Claus is, is a very good uh, example for, um, for the joy and for the, the celebration of, of Christmas. But again, he is not, as we said, the reason of the season. The reason of the season is, is the birth of Christ. But Santa Claus began as he was a true, historically, he was a true person. He was uh, called Saint Nicholas. He was uh, uh, born in... So it's not a legend. Uh, his, this shape and this uh, clothes is a legend. But that we see nowadays. Yes. yes. But, 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 but he is a true person but, in history. But he is a true yes. person that existed. Yes. Okay. He was a, a bishop of a small town called Myra in, in modern day Turkey. Uh, in, in the third century, he was born in uh, 280 something and died 340 something and he was very famous with his generosity and that he he loved children and uh, tried to uh, make them happy and yes, cheer yeah. make them happy and smile so uh, and his uh, his celebration by his death was in the 6th of december of every year so uh, especially in the middle ages this uh, this uh, legend was revived and they uh, was intended to uh, give uh, some sweets and and gifts for children at his at his festivals in the sixth of December. This is uh, Middle Ages Europe, and then uh, when some uh, Europeans uh, immigrate to USA, especially from Germany and Netherlands, so they revive it again this legend in the 19th century, and then the writers, American writers, took this and make this course shape of fat person with, with red clothes and give, make the celebration uh, related to the Christmas instead of his uh, departure in the 6th of December. So it's historically based but the other uh, symbols and shapes are Regarding Mary's recurrent apparition in Egypt over the course of many years, do you believe that this matter might indicate a certain special bond between Egypt and Mary? Of course, yes, because the only country that St. Mary visited outside of Palestine was Egypt. That was the period when uh, the Holy Family escaped from the face of Herod, who was the great Herod, who was a very powerful king in Judea, in, in Palestine at this day, and he intended to kill, kill baby Jesus. So all the Holy Family, uh, through an angelic vision, uh, they came to Egypt and stayed for more than three years. So, of course, this is the only country that St. Mary visited and she traveled a lot until she reached to uh, Asyut and then come back again until she, she uh, went again to Palestine. So there is, of course, a special bond between St. Mary and, and Egypt. And again, I, I can see because um, it may be because the nature of people themselves I think it's very close to uh, uh, this uh, poor girl, St. Mary, and, and attitude and as, as behavior and as culture. I think we we much very related to her. So I think, yes, there is a very strong bond. Yes. Uh, Pope Tuadus II of Alexandria said that the great apparition of the Virgin Mary in 1968 was a message of love from God to Egyptians. Would you tell us more about this and the several miracles that accompanied uh, Mary's uh, 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 apparition, sir? Yes, uh, I think, uh, as many said, that especially at that year, this was the next year to the, the uh, war of 1967. So I think all people was feeling desperate and um, uh, losing hope and, and sorrow because, because of the many deaths in this war. So I think, yes, this was a message of, of love, of support, uh, of hope to all Egyptians and uh, to tell us that uh, heaven is, is with us, that 
it's not only about the earth and its uh, its warfare and its uh, problems but there is heavenly messages there is heavenly hope even even at earth there is a lot of problems and desperate so from time to time we need this heavenly message to remind us that there is another life there is another hope it's not only about earth and its and its issues there is something higher there is something more joyful and more permanent than earth so i think yes from time to time we need this message and to to prove that this is true oppression it was accompanied by a lot of miracles to to both muslims and the christians and even to foreigners that witnessed and um, have attestation for this for this oppression um, uh, Egyptian sir um, or father carry very special feelings for the Virgin Mary and uh, they have uh, like deep belief in her and this is mutual between Muslims and Christians. From your own perspective sir, uh, what can you tell us about this and your belief, the same belief? Yes, I think yes. And I think the reason from my point of view that we view, we all, view St. Mary as a very honorable saint. In Christianity, it's, it's, a, it's a, the highest rank of, of saints, of all women and, uh, and men. It's a, the highest rank of saint is St. Is, is Mary. It's the first one. So uh, it's a very honorable. And, and of course, the same in Islam. It's, it's also very honorable. So when we see that there is a saint that is very honorable, but at the same time is like us, very simple, very humble, very poor, very everything. So a, a, a critical or, or a very important bond happened here because we want this, this, uh, this honor, we want this, uh, this high degree of, uh, of honor, but at the same time we cannot reach it. So we tend to attach ourselves to one that very similar to us. So she is very similar to us in our poverty, in our symbolistness, in our um, at sometimes ignorance, but but at the end she is very honored. So we 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 intended to be attached to her, and we ask her prayers. Um, sir, um, uh, Muslims uh, sometimes are seen lighting candles in church, or they ask their Christian friends. Uh, to light a candle for health on their behalf or for even prayers, not uh, health especially. Um, how do you view, view this and uh, when this happens, is it um, of mercy to the Muslim this, and that ask this, this? So if I ask you now to um, pray for me and to light a candle for me, uh, does this reach me? Of course, I think yes, because um, we have many, um, we have many shared beliefs and the values. So we acting on the on the shared um, values and the beliefs. Of course, despite there is some differences, but we act on the shared, which is a lot. So, as you may know, that um, in the in the social uh, or on anthropological studies, we are classified in one category: Christians and the Muslims as monotheist. There is another world view, uh, such as um, deism, nihilism, uh, pantheism. But, but Christians and Muslims and the Jews are the only which are, are categorized in this category, which are monotheist. So we are similar in, in, a, lot of, of, in a lot of things. And again, uh, I think the, the, the spirituality or the spirit that can be felt in the church, uh, that anyone can enter the church can feel that yes God is here or around here so uh, this make drive to to many people to to seek to pray in the church or to light candle make sure that these prayers are heard because um, God is is hearing us when you are praying so um, I think yes and I think even if you don't ask uh, we are um, we are raised that we pray to each other, even those who who don't ask. But we 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 we, uh, we raised that we pray for all, for 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 the uh, for the purpose and uh, of support of of all people. So yes. Um, so you believe. Sorry. So you believe. Yes. Okay.
I believe as a Muslim that when I ask you to add to light in a candle for me and pray for me a special prayer that God um, um, does this prayer and um, listens to it and sends it yes. back. Yes, he, he listen, but maybe his, his respond not as we want because at the end we pray and, and say at the end of each prayer let us be your will. Yes, exactly. Because so, does, God does the best. Yes. But when you have the instinct and the um, um, feeling that God uh, and that you believe in what you're asking God for, God always gives it back to you. Yes. When it's time for it, of course. As government bodies are to transfer, of course, to the new administrative capital, we are already transferred, actually. The president was keen to establish a new cathedral in the new administrative capital. What message did this new cathedral send? Um, as I said um, in the question of the president, that it's very obvious that it's equality and citizenship is is primary pillars for the our new uh, country and our uh, uh, new gumhoreir uh, so uh, this is very important to show all the world and before the world to show um, our people that there is true equality and the true citizenship among all and this can be exemplified by the presence of uh, the mosque and the cathedral at the same time uh, uh, celebrating at the same time so um, again here we are moving toward um, the, our developed country through this primary pillars of citizenship and equality um, Father, the cathedral and the new administrative um, uh, city is um, really uh, amazing it's mm. outstanding of course it's um, uh, built uh, with uh, love and it stands out everywhere. Uh, it's one of the cathedral, uh, cathedrals, I think, that stand out not only in Egypt but all over the world. Yes. Uh, w and this uh, here at St. Mark Cathedral, we are now um, doing this uh, very important episode celebrating a very special event. Uh, where do you feel yourself comfortable more? Because we always feel comfortable when we used to grow up. Yeah. Uh, it's not about something that's new, posh, expensive, or spent on, or standing out all over the world. Uh, it's a new city, city of course. Uh, the new admi uh, administrative city is about Egypt and the entire world. And President Fatah Sisi is working so hard on this um, city. Uh, and we totally understand the importance of the cathedral and the mosque over there. Uh, but at the end of the day, where do you feel more comfortable when you're doing your prayers, when you're, do, when you're living your normal life as a father in mm -hmm. the cathedral here or in Abbasaya or in the new administrative city? And I don't want to you, you to be embarrassed and it's totally your right to answer <laughs> yes, this question. Yes, yes. But for me, I always like my old time and I always like my old places. Uh, this is my character. Yes. And I am so if it was me to choose whether it is here at, at Abbasaya or the new administrative city, of course I will always be proud of the new administrative city and the cathedral and mosque over there, but I'll still love other mosques all over Egypt, which we have a lot of course, and we always have, we also have a lot of churches all over Egypt, especially mm -hmm. in Masl Adima and in uh, Manian, among which is, uh, of course, uh, many, many, mm. which is uh, most important, of the, I think, is the Mu'allaqa over there, yeah. and there are amazing mosques, uh, uh, churches over there. Which do you choose more? I choose, of course, the old ones. What do you choose? And I think I, I am like you, that <laughs> uh, if I choose, I choose my church, my small church, that uh, they give us, uh, give me the the, the 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 spirit and this this feel of spirituality, and then as you said here, because this is the old ones that we were raised and uh, we saw uh, Pope Shenouda the third, and his prayers and his sermons here at this. Your history is here. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Father uh, Musa Abid, um, wishing you, of course, uh, wonderful holidays. Uh, a very special Merry Christmas and of course as we approach the new year a merry a very happy new year wishing you 2024 all the best uh, for you personally uh, for um, every single Christian and Muslim here in Egypt and all over the world 
um, for Egypt as a whole entire country. We wish you all the best, sir. Thank you very much for being with us in this very special interview. Okay, thank you, especially to you, Rana, and to all the, the cast of Mile TV. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Dear viewers, this is this segment of uh, Nile Cruise. Hope you've enjoyed the viewers uh, bringing you this very special um, segment from the uh, cathedral in Nabasaya, celebrating, of course, uh, very special holidays. Stay tuned. I'll be back again. Don't go away. Layla Tide, 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 Lay